What's going on everyone? Welcome to another Keyshot Quick Tip. In this video, we're going to take a brief look at the HDRI editor and create a quick custom HDRI environment for your Keyshot scenes. When you're working in Keyshot, there are essentially two ways to light your scenes. The first is physical lights, which tend to be the most accurate to real world lighting and shadow casting. However, they can make your key shot scenes incredibly heavy and difficult to calculate. This can cause artifacts such as fireflies in your images and can significantly extend render times, particularly on underpowered workstations. The second way to light your scenes is by using HDRIs. HDRIs are not quite as accurate as physical lights, but they are incredibly close and produce fantastic results without bogging down your workstation. With HDRIs, you can drag and drop default ones from the Environments tab, source pre-built HDRIs from third-party libraries, which you can then import into Keyshot, or you can build them from scratch using the HDRI editor, which we'll be talking about today. For this quick tip, I'll be using this Bluetooth speaker model and the HDRI editor to build a basic three-point lighting setup, which will consist of a key light, a fill light, and a rim light. As I mentioned a moment ago, you can always drag and drop HDRIs from the Environments tab and you can even customize them to better suit your needs. Typically, when I'm using one of the default environments, I tend to start with one of the two or three panel studio environments because they provide a nice neutral colored lighting with a good amount of contrast. For the sake of this demo, however, I'll show you how to make one from scratch. I'll start by locating my Create Blank Environment Map option from the icons to the left of the Environments list. This will introduce a new environment to the list with no lighting and a flat dark gray background color. I'll then open my HDRI Editor by selecting the HDRI Editor tab under the Environment Preview. Let's get oriented quickly before I start setting up the scene's lighting. Just below the Settings and HDRI Editor tabs, you'll find a series of icons that allow you to add different pins and icons that allow you to save your custom environments to your library as well as export them. Just below that is your pin list. This will contain any pins you've added to your scene as well as folders you've introduced to organize your groups of pins. To the left, you have icons that allow you to delete, organize, and target your pins. And below that, you have a series of buttons that allow you to customize your environment's background. This is also where you'll find your pin settings once they've been added and selected from the list. I typically stick with the color background for most renders, but some notable mentions are the sun and sky background, which works spectacularly for outdoor renderings, and the image background, which lets you add an image to give your rendering location-specific context. So let's start adding some lights. To add my first light, I'll go to the icons at the top of my pin list and select the leftmost icon to add a new pin to my list. Each pin you add will represent a single light source. For the first pin, I'll be setting it up as a fill light to cast a bit of light onto the side of the model to give it some dimension. The easiest way for me to do this is to make sure the target icon to the left of the list is highlighted in blue while my pin is selected. This will allow me to simply click anywhere on the model that I'd like to add a highlight to and Keyshot will automatically position the light within the environment to cast a highlight on my desired location. I can then repeat these steps for my key light by aiming it at the front of my model and the rim light which I'll aim at the very top of the model to separate it from the background. I'll then want to adjust each of the light's brightness to best suit my needs for this specific rendering. In this case, my rim light will be the brightest to create a slight halo effect along the surrounding edges of my model. My key light will be the second brightest to make the front face more prominent. And my fill light will be the least bright, which should give me a nice 1, 2, 3 read on my model surfaces. You can also customize your pin shape by selecting from the circular and rectangular buttons, as well as selecting the half checkbox to cut the light in half if you're looking to create hard highlights for a more dramatic lighting effect on things such as glass screens, sunglass lenses, or even clear coated surfaces. For this quick tip, I've taken a very basic look at the HDRI editor, but the tool really gives you a ton of flexibility from being able to change each individual pin's color to create interesting color schemes to creating more cinematic style lighting such as the ever popular orange and teal lighting that you often see in movies and popular YouTube videos. The sky's the limit and as you master this tool, you can get as creative as your imagination will take you. And before I go, I have one little bonus tip. You'll notice that with my HDRI built, if I rotate around my scene, the lighting pins will be visible in the background. If you're looking to customize your background's color or want the pins to not be visible to the camera, simply jump over to the settings tab, select the color option from the background accordion, and use the color picker window to create a custom uniform background color. 
Hopefully this quick tip gets you started down the path to mastering lighting and key shot. And as always, if you're interested in more useful key shot content, hit that subscribe button, give us a like, and don't forget to let us know your thoughts on this quick tip in the comment section below.